All right, guys, welcome back to another video. And in this video, we are going to continue our discussion on mechanical vibrations. Now, I know in the previous video, I said that we were going to start solving these equations, but there's actually one more thing that I want to show you guys. So just for a quick recap, whoops. Um, this is our ceiling right here, right? And basically what we did is we said we have a spring, we have a damper, and we come along and we attach a block of mass M to the spring in this damper that's suspended from the ceiling. And so this point of attachment, the center of mass of our block, this is what we define our coordinate system as. This is where our x coordinate begins. So it starts here at zero. And so zero is aligned with the center of mass at the relaxed length of our spring and our damper. And if you remember the previous video, what we did is we applied Newton's law and we summed up the forces, set it equal to m times a, and we derived our differential equation. And so for a spring with a spring constant of k, a damper with a damping coefficient of c, assuming that these are linear springs and linear dampers, we were able to derive our differential equation that described this system, and that was mx double prime plus cx prime plus kx, and this was equal to mg plus f of t. And so here on the left side, we have our system, which is described by the mass, the damper, and the spring. And then here on the right-hand side, we have the, uh, the forces, uh, the external forces. And that would be the force of gravity, which will be pointing in this direction. And then any sort of arbitrary for uh, forcing function that we apply to this block of mass m. And so all this was derived and discussed in the previous video. Now in this video, I want to point out a very important strategy whenever we approach engineering problems. And that is our choice of coordinate system. Because if you choose a convenient and strategic coordinate system, you can actually reduce the complexity of your different equation or of the computations in general. And so that's what we're going to do in this video. We are going to take our same ceiling. So I'm just going to redraw the exact same system over here. Uh, but I'm going to draw it a little bit different in that I'm going to choose a different coordinate system. And so we have our spring, we have our damper, and once again they're just hanging from the ceiling. Now whenever we attach our block of mass m, this spring and the damper are going to stretch, right? Because it has mass and gravity is acting on it. And so naturally this block is actually going to deflect downwards. And again, the reason is simply because the spring and the damper, these, these uh, cords or whatever uh, uh, that are attached from the ceiling to the mass, they're going to stretch. And instead of defining our coordinate system at the relaxed length, which corresponds to this line right here, we're going to actually define our coordinate system as starting from this deflected length, this stretched length. And so we're going to define x equals zero as the point at which this mass is in equilibrium with the spring and the damper. So our coordinate system is actually going to be offset by an amount of delta x. So we're starting delta x lower than what we did before in this case over here. So how do we actually find what delta x is? And so just for clarity, what I'm defining the origin of this new coordinate system as is the point at which the mass under no external forces except for the force of gravity is at equilibrium with the spring and the damper. And so we can actually come up with an expression for delta x by considering a free body diagram. So again, we're only considering the force of gravity. We're not worrying about any other external forces. And we have our spring force, fk, and we have our uh, force from the damper, which is going to be uh, fd. But since the damping force depends on the velocity, and we're assuming this is at equilibrium or at rest, uh, this force is actually, we can actually completely ignore because it's going to be zero because fd is equal to c x prime and x prime is zero. So it's all going to cancel out to zero. So we really only have to look at the force balance between the spring force and the gravity force. And that's just when fk is equal to mg. Or in other words, whenever k delta x is equal to mg. And so we can actually solve for delta x. Delta x is simply mg over k. 
So all this is saying is that whenever we attach our block of mass M to our spring and damper, as in this case, while the spring and damper are at relaxed length, then naturally the force of gravity is going to stretch that. And we're going to define our new coordinate system associated with this picture on the right as a coordinate system that begins at that equilibrium length. So we attach the block of mass M, it's going to deflect by mg over k, and that's where we're going to, going to start our new origin at. So for the rest of this video, we are going to have this picture in mind with this coordinate system. And we're going to rederive the different equation that describes the vibration of the system. And we're going to do that the exact same way as before. We're going to apply Newton's law, sum up the forces, and we're going to get a different equation that is actually simpler than this one right here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have our block of mass M, and I'm, going, I'm just going to go ahead and draw a free body diagram. We have our force of gravity, mg. We have an arbitrary forcing function, f of t. Then we have our spring force, and then we have our damping force from the, from the damper. And so we just applied Newton's law, some of the forces, and that's just equal to mg plus f of t minus fk minus fd and this is going to equal mx double prime or m times a. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at fd first, the damping. So this is just simply equal to cx double prime, just like before because it's only dependent on the velocity. And we're also assuming that it is a linear damper with a coefficient c. So that's that. Now let's go ahead and look at fk. So fk is equal to k times the displacement of the spring. But remember, we started at, we're starting already with a stretch spring at delta x because our new origin. So this is actually delta x plus x because any additional displacement in the x direction is going to be in addition to the already stretched length uh, of delta x. And we can use this expression up here to rewrite this. This is just equal to k times mg over k plus x, which simplifies to mg plus kx. So our spring force is mg plus kx. And so when we come back up to this equation and we substitute in for Newton's law, this expression and this expression, what we get is mx double prime, starting with this side. So mx double prime is equal to mg plus f of t minus this quantity right here, which is minus mg plus kx and then minus cx prime. And as you guys can see, something amazing happens. This mg cancels with this mg, and whenever we rearrange, we get the system mx double prime plus cx prime plus kx is equal to f of t. This is our new system associated with this coordinate system choice. And so as you can see, the main difference is that we no longer have this mg in our equation. And so essentially what we've done is we've reduced the complexity of our differential equation with the simple change of a coordinate system. And that's actually a pretty powerful tool whenever we look at engineering problems in general. If you can pick a convenient coordinate system that makes the computation or the math easier, then you might as well do it. And all we did here in this problem is we changed the origin of our coordinate system to from starting at the relaxed length to the equilibrium length and we were able to eliminate a term from our differential equation. So this guy right here is what we are going to be looking at whenever we solve the differential equation. So the future videos where whenever we solve this guy, we're going to assume that a coordinate system starts at this equilibrium position. And it's just gonna make things easier because we don't have to worry about this term. Okay, so just to reiterate the point of the last two videos, we originally considered a system where we had a spring, a damper, hanging from a ceiling, and we attached a block of mass M, and before we even let go of it, we defined the coordinate system to be right here at the relaxed length. Whenever the spring and the damper were at their relaxed lengths, that is where we defined our coordinate system origin as. And then in this video, I said, okay, you know what? We're gonna do something a little bit different. We are going to, instead of defining our coordinate system here, we're actually going to attach the block of mass M We'll let it deflect a little bit, come to an equilibrium, and then at that point, that's where we're gonna define our new coordinate system as. And what we showed in this video is that if we consider this case right here, case one, we get mx double prime 
plus cx prime plus kx equals mg plus f of t. So this is case one, and this is for an arbitrary system uh, for an arbitrary loading condition. And what we showed is that if we consider this new coordinate system in case two right here, this guy, this equation actually transforms under this new coordinate system to be mx double prime plus cx prime plus kx equals f of t. We lose this mg term. And if you actually think about it, it actually kind of makes a lot of sense because in case one, we haven't considered that deflection. And so this mg term actually accounts and, and allows us to capture that deflection uh, in this case. In case two, we've already considered that deflection. And so what that means is that the system is actually going to oscillate around this equilibrium position rather than around the relaxed length. And so that's why it's actually convenient to choose this coordinate system right here. And the reason why I'm reiterating this so much and the reason why I'm repeating this so much is because this kind of model is used all the time in engineering analysis, especially when we're talking about vibrations or just trying to reduce things to very simple systems. A lot of systems in engineering can be reduced to these very, very simple models. And so I want to drill in your head that whenever you see something like this, that you know that you can model as a vibrating system like this, I want you to be able to just immediately write this down. You shouldn't even have to think about Newton's law. We should immediately say, okay, that's our system. This is the difference equation that, that defines the system.